And welcome to this week's edition of Outs of the Box TV. I'm Alex Ansari. It is 322. That's right, 322. But not a conspiracy here, folks. At least I hope not. It is 322 in the year 2024. And I'm the guy, I'm your guy, who's going to be discussing the world events and changes, not only negative, but also positive, where we can find them when the sun is more active. It's not just the wars and the unrest. It's also the breakthroughs in human consciousness for the human beings on the ground that are going to will themselves to that state of evolution. And I'm going to be your life coach. I'm going to acknowledge the changes in the air, in the ionosphere, literally, that drive some people bonkers. You know about Pisces? You know, I was born during solar maximum. You know, some people think that those folks are nutters to the max times 10. And I disagree. I disagree that what they perceive is a defect, is an illness, is in fact enhanced perception. And that's what I brought to Coast to Coast AM, one of the largest, if not the largest, overnight radio show on the earth, but certainly in America. But I have some constructive um, criticism for big shows that are out there and how they may want to evolve with the times to attract younger audiences instead of just simply people that are above a certain age. I also noticed that Coast to Coast tends to have some of the same callers, which I find almost unbelievable for a show of that alleged size. Two people have come over to my Substack, And as I said on the show, I'm going to be discussing specific meditations. And I think that it is time for me to be in a super calm state of mind in some podcasts where there's zero news and it's a guided meditation for 30, 45, one hour, listening to my favorite music, Tangerine Dream, the Exit album, the Fire Starter album, the Into the Sun album, uh, and many others. So today, this is going to be a show without graphics. This is going to be airing in Portland, Oregon. I want to um, go through some announcements. We're also going to talk about preparedness. This is uh, one of my friends here. Okay. And I want to thank the, um, the lovely email that came in from the woman who's been watching me for years, who thanked me for warning her about Portland, Oregon, who lives somewhere out there, who appreciates me telling her the truth. She and about two or three other women thanked me for telling them the truth about Portland, Oregon before they made the very expensive mistake of moving there. Now, to those of you that are in Portland, I am encouraging you to Get off your couch, find a way to go to an internet cafe, and if you really want a toll-free number or a number to call me, I want to know that you're watching and that you want to see the show on the air, but we need to make some changes. I cannot carry your issues, Portland, Oregon, and I'm frankly still bothered by the unresolved past, so I think that it's best for me to move my content forward and focus on the big picture planetarily. And that's the solar flares and just report on how it's affecting Portland. And if you have some awesome stuff to tell me about what's happening in Portland, Oregon, hey, my email is solarstorm333 at proton.me. But at this point, what's going to be tagged at the bottom is my Substack because that is the free call to action, right? That is not an advertisement. It's free content, free podcasts, free videos. And in the future, I foresee myself making a series, eight comes to mind, eight hours of solar flare content. I don't need you. I don't need your help. But if some of you are professionals and you have that extra touch and you're not going to make me grovel before AI, oh, AI, please give me an animation. But AI didn't do a bad job, did it? Check out Solar Wars 2025. A human did not make that. So if AI does have some positive things with regards to it, Good. Let us use AI before it destroys us all. You need to be aware of the threats to physical safety. And we're going to be talking tonight without showing you a bunch of graphics and videos. We're going to be talking tonight about what you need to know about how big tech is weaponized against you and your family and your heritage, whatever you identify with. That you, whatever your heritage is, is more than likely being betrayed as something monstrous at this time. Okay? 
And some of you may not realize that you're not actually being featured as monsters at this time, okay? Uh, but you may think you are. You need to be honest about where the propaganda machine really is. So this program has been brought to you by, that's a joke, folks, that's a joke. What I'm about to show you are things that I'm obtaining, being that I made mistakes back in the day and don't own a bazooka. Frontiersmen, and these have a limited shelf life, okay? Um, the A-man introduced me to this at the age of 12 or 13. It's known as the spring baton, and as a very strong man, a power lifter, you know, a person like that didn't have to strike people very hard with an object like this to cause extreme, extreme pain without, without extreme damage, which can be very expensive when you break bones. I'm very disappointed with the mainstream society promoting death and destruction, guns. Look at how easy it is for people to get guns, yet, yet certain things in certain states are illegal that you might use to defend yourself without a bazooka. It's actually against the law to use non-lethal self-defense. It's like they want us dead. Not an anti-Second Amendment argument. And for those of you that are so pro-Second Amendment, where were you when my Second Amendment was taken? Where were you when my Second Amendment was taken? Where are you now, now that my Second Amendment is taken? You're so, so Second Amendment. But did I really deserve to have my Second Amendment taken? because I made mistakes medicating when really, back in 1998, the vape should have already been out. You've got bombs, you've got missiles, you've got Agent Orange, where Vietnam vets, how you doing, Paul Jenkins? He's thinking about his father, who this system harmed. The system can create all these different chemicals, but it's going to tell you, no, you can't have your medicine at the federal level, nor will it be subsidized. But here, here, have some XYZ medication that's in the experimental stage. Okay. <sighs> Palo Alto. Let me answer some questions now. Jennifer asks what I was featuring when I showed my altar in my sleeping area several weeks ago when I was starting to talk about Dion Fortune. Then I felt like I got visited by the spirit. And I'm like, oh, never mind. Shutting it down now. Uh, but yes, grounding is important during this time. Prayer, meditation, taking time off from certain addictions. Uh, so we're going to show you some prepper stuff in a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about the Coast to Coast interview. Let's briefly go over a few other announcements. So if you want to volunteer to help me write my third book, which is my autobiography to be published by July 2025, looking for someone who's really dedicated to the long, tedious task of cleaning up any grammar imperfections. Um, but I don't sense there's a lot of them. Just someone with a lot of patience is needed. Documentaries also people with certain skills, people with certain marketing skills. It's definitely time for me, I think, to even start my own business or t-shirt business or something that can create revenue because at present I have no retirement plan and I do believe in looking beyond 2025. I never said that the end of the world is coming, but that I am concerned about women's safety. So if you haven't yet heard the Coast to Coast interview, check it out. It was done over cell phone, okay, because we couldn't do the landline. Okay, so what I'm going to say now is that one of the producers told me initially it was going to be on Zoom. And then on the day of the interview, I'm contacted by another staff member who's higher up uh, at Coast to Coast. It says it's, it's actually going to be the phone, which I assumed, which is why I booked the, uh, the motel hotel. Now, I went down there at 1 o'clock, and I asked this man, who appeared to be mentally handicapped, if he could you know, be there at the phone. And he had, there was like a sense that I had that he was like possessed, like, like mocking me, like, what? What are you talking to me for? Very rude. And so like people don't really understand. Some of you may not understand that there really are places in America that are so screwed up that the customer is always wrong, right? You might be in a work environment where the customer is always right, where you are expected to go along with the customer. I've been there. I've been that bus boy. I've been that bottle clerk at Fred Meyer in Burlingame in Portland, Oregon, counting bottles for five cents for the bums and for the people and the drunks and the parties and the frat boys. Now it's what, 10 cents a bottle or a can? Cut my fingers so many times, so many times touching that broken glass right off Twilliger, Barbara Boulevard in Portland, Oregon. 
So what I'm saying to you is that, so like when I was young, there's no way you could say, no, 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 no. I'm not going through all this broken glass. You are wrong, sir. I have rights. None of that. None of that when I was younger. Always, okay, yes, don't complain. And if you do complain, you're going to get chastised by your manager. In other aspects and cultures in America, like everybody that has the job is dumb and is incompetent. And so like, let me break this down for you. So what we have here recently is an increase in X-Class solar flares. And keep in mind, I've been awake now for... <sighs> 32 hours. We had a massive geomanic storm yesterday that could have messed with the phone system, which I'm getting into. There was a migrant riot at the Texas border. There are stories, allegedly about U.S. troops getting close to China, and NATO is moving up on Russia. Russia is making more threats. There's more Chinese maneuvers around Taiwan. Biden says that Iran is about to attack using EMP weapons, and we're getting close to the eclipse. The National Guard is in Oklahoma for some reason. Some nuclear division. We have the National Guard in New York City, we have a problem with assaults right now on the planet in these, in these hoods, in these, in these ghettos. Uh, and it's really, really unfortunate. I ask that you pray for certain people out there that I believe are vulnerable. And I pray right now for certain people out there. So hear me out, and maybe what I'm saying and going through will help you. This is a time of stepping back from the insanity of the world and basically declaring that we're not going to be connected and corded up to any more of this craziness. And that's the healing message of this eclipse that I have for you. No more. No more. No more of the same old crap. No more of the same old lies. Okay, this is going to be Access TV, so we're 12 minutes in. The intention is no foul language. The intention has been set, and so it is. We can do better. And last night on National Radio, a show that I listened to at the age of 14 years old as a baby boy living with my grandmother, Ruth Nagel, after years of being dragged along with my mother to New Age gatherings, I felt like Art Bell was the real deal, even if he laughed at 9-11 truth. That was interesting. Sorry, Mom. Your friends were not. Art Bell was interesting. And so I, maybe that was healing for me to hear that fatherly, masculine, ufologist voice from somewhere out there, even before even hearing Art Bell's voice for the first time, knowing that I wanted to be a DJ at the age of seven. Did you know that? I've got, I've got tapes of me as a little kid acting like I had the Rush Limbaugh show, thinking he was cool back in the day because he was on TV. I liked Rush Limbaugh at like age like 10 during Desert Storm. I thought that was the, the, the you know what, the shiza, the pimp shiza, old slang from old AA days in the late 90s, Portland. The pimp shiza. Mm. But yeah, so here we are now in 2024. Okay, we have multiple X-class solar flares, the strongest uh, solar flare in seven years. And what happened seven years? The eclipse. Telling you a bunch of quick facts that I shared on Coast to Coast, plus a few others. Right, that I believe what happened around October 7th was a satanic ritual whatever the truth is, and people are being hurt and hated on both sides. And that's what the devil wants. And that's what's happening. And right in between the eclipses, what do we see? The attack on the Houthis on one You think that's an accident? So what's coming? What's coming in a few days? What's coming next week? I think we all know something is coming, almost guaranteed. And if nothing comes, celebrate good times Come on, dun, 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 dun. Go and drink in downtown Portland. Get some of that grape vape. 
whatever else you got going on, celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. But I'll tell you, when I watch Portland, Oregon, celebrate, they want to cry. 2008, 2009, thinking that Barack Obama got elected, that he's going to stop the killing of my people. And if it was your people, you certainly would not call anybody racist for standing up for their own right to live. What's racist is any of you standing with Obama when he expanded the drone attacks. That would be black supremacy. Yeah. Own it, baby. Black supremacy, white supremacy, working together as one. You want the truth exposed? You came to the right channel. You want to be spiritual? You want to be evolved? Call out all the hatred to all the people without holding back. Take the gloves off. I apologize sincerely for on Coast to Coast even giving suspicious observer five seconds of a promo like he would do so for me. I look at him today and he's like, white people, you're under attack from all the brown people. They're invading and you are going to be destroyed. And see, I'm all about fighting anti-white racism, but certain rhetoric, I think, goes above and beyond and placates this us versus them. And homie, don't play that. Okay? I am of mixed race heritage, and you will come to accept this and understand this if you choose to remain subscribed. And why? I cannot be in a mentality of us versus them and see myself on any side. I'm on the side of free humanity. That is above the illusions of separation. I believe in that. I don't believe that what we are on the outside ultimately dictates our value. Because I don't agree with you, planet Earth, that my value is next to nothing. And it's, it's, it's schizophrenic, actually, for aspects of this world to be like, you are the truther. It's, it's, folks, you want the truth? It's hard for me to accept any of your compliments and praise. Because my life feels so destroyed by my truth. See how that, my life feels so destroyed by my truth. Like, what? Yes, you can speak truth at such a, a, a calibrated frequency that it like irradiates the unconsciousness around you. Folks, for over a year, I've been doing the mantra, only good people will be drawn to me. Bad people or people of a lower consciousness won't want anything to do with my content. So, so why if I put out a mantra like that, like daily, 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 like cementing that into the holographic reality, why then would I be ticked off if I see someone on sub? That's exactly what I asked for. As Maurice Cotterell put it, we have the 12 zodiac signs, and it's because of those 12 signs plus the Chinese sign that we have different personalities, and that's why we argue. And so there is purpose in having differences of opinion. And what I believe we need to do is have the maturity to learn from people that may see things differently than us, okay? So what did we do today? We covered world events real quick and solar flares. And, okay, if you're online, okay, we're not doing graphics here, but I spent a long time, folks, a long time, a couple days, gathering source material for you that was easily, clearly laid out for those of you that are new with this material, for you to share that link with others that are new with the material. It doesn't have a thousand of my videos going, me, 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 me. No, I've got sources from the source. I've got links to the Amazon books that I own. I own 90% of those that I link to. The others I got from the library, Chasing the Sun and the Sun Biography. The, less, the least lesser quality of the books, the higher quality books I own. And if you know of books and eBooks and or documentaries on the sun, um, Dieter Bros, The Solar Revolution, does he have a DVD out there somewhere? Haven't seen that. Need to obtain that. It might be in German. Okay, if you've read this book and have any um, opinions on it, this is something that is allegedly China's master plan uh, to take out America using Islamic extremists. Okay, it allegedly came out before 9-11. So again, we have a lot of people gathering for the great American eclipse but they're gathering, they're looking with their little glasses and they think they're being cute, but they really don't want to be bothered. They really don't want to be bothered with any perspectives that the killing fields get activated when the eclipse energy. How many of you noticed also for years, even though I don't always verbally talk about eclipse, how many of you can see at Substack that the eclipse is a part of the symbol for OTB TV and that the person that made that 
took it upon themselves to take content that they heard from me and to make that a mix of grid, city, nature, sun, moon, OTB TV with Alex answering. And so what does this eclipse mean from a spiritual perspective? And look at how all roads for me after years of having the eclipse symbolism has led to this point in time for me in 2024 in the spring. So what am I getting ready to spring off to next? Now, if you would like to volunteer because I need you or someone to assist if it's going to happen, I would really like maybe the same person to do a little bit of a lot of things that maybe has the time. But I'm going to throw this out there and just get back to what I'm doing. It would be great to have a guest every one to two months. And it would be great for me to be a guest on other shows, two main things that I would be interested in now that I'm going to outgrow coast to coast. Amy Goodman, I would do because Amy Goodman needs to hear a non-far-right 9-11 perspective. She already gave time to the loose change kiddos, which in my opinion aren't real truthers and are not deep thinkers and still to me come across as kids. The depth of their knowledge and understanding of this from my interactions with them directly is almost next to nothing. Okay, I even Burmis on my show to promote him. He's another one of those folks. It's all about me, all about me, and as a inability to act outside of the uh, mainstream media conspiracy truther celebrity complex. Mm hmm. Insiders Club and Outsiders. Insiders Paul Joseph Watson. Insiders this guy, that guy, and then you have the outsiders that will never get anywhere. See, it's not just shadow banning. It's the fact that humanity is asleep. Humanity can blame the system. Humanity can blame the algorithms. Humanity can do this. Humanity can do that. But until humanity is willing to look itself in the mirror and take accountability for its own actions, it's going to continue to remain enslaved. Think about the level of ignorance of a human being to dislike a video about Cambridge Analytica in 2017 when it was breaking because they believed it was just anti-Trump snowflake garbly goo. If that was the case, if that was the case, Sherlock, if that was the case, Berniak, why is there a lawsuit in which Facebook is asking its users to fill out some paperwork so they can get their share of the cut. There's been a decision made. There's been a decision made. Some decision's been made somewhere at some point in our system that's already broken. In other words, they're admitting this, meaning it's much worse. That they did something to you regarding your info and data that's so bad, they're like, bro, if we're on stall on Facebook, we've got like $8 for you to get like two McDoubles in like a Las Vegas like bus terminal. What do you think about them apples? So the algorithm, how AI decides who gets hired, monitored, promoted, and fired, and why we need to fight back now. Answer me now, Sherlock. How do you fight AI and help me spread my content on the streets of Portland, Oregon? And who is doing it now? And why not? What rational argument really is for why not in a world where people will bend over backwards for a Clyde Lewis, a David Icke, and Alex Jones, or somebody else who appears to be on top? Now, let's address that comment there about someone looking at high-value men getting the big-ticket items. I don't think the person leaving that comment has any idea of my homelessness and the persecution that I, as a male, have experienced, and in no way am I considered high-value at all. If you want to be considered high value, write a book. Actually talk about what's going on in the world. Expose human trafficking of women. I do not respect the feminine on the earth that wants to ignore my warnings. I go where men don't go on the earth. And when I go to someone's channel and I see they like other content creators that I know are racist and that content creator says they're not racist, I know that there's a barrier with this person realizing that they're a hypocrite. Okay, there's a young lady out there who likes some content creators that are anti-mixed race. 
an anti-different heritage, yet she's saying the issue is racism towards mixed race. So folks, men and women out there, some of you, you have values that you state verbally that you have, yet you like, follow, and promote certain figures that are absolutely anything but those value systems. I'm the guy who's trying to help you like a big brother that you never had. And I'm challenging you to see me as that, as a life coach, not anything else and not entertainment, for you to respect me for the intelligence that I have. I should have been a friggin' father. I should have been a son that was loved by his mom and dad, either together or separately, either just pure unconditional love from a mother that will say, congratulations, son, for getting on the nation's number one Overnight, talk radio. Do you think this mother that sends me these silly Valentine's Day cards and, 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 and silly Easter cards says, congratulations, son? No. So all these future cards that come go in the garbage. All I want is a letter that says, this is my message to you. Your life matters. Your message matters. Some of the things that I said to you when I was younger, shouldn't have been said, right? That's the focus, not the Easter card, not the Christmas card. Now you, mom, have my book. Now you, dad, have my book. Now you, Bruce, have my book. Now you, a man who at one point said, I didn't really know what I was talking about with the sore flares, have my book. And you can look at that book and go, look at that misspelling. What a dummy. You can be that low consciousness if you want, or you could do something for the first time in your effing life and actually learn something from who is now your teacher. I am the teacher now, and I advise you, as your attorney in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I advise you to evolve your soul beyond this matrix. And what I say to coast to coast in lightning speed with a level of power and prana that did not exist before. It's like we're in the never ending story with a Treyu, and we're trying to bounce out of this ninth gate. Let me go back to this nice young lady and tell her a story. I was involved with a woman physically who visited me from Australia, who physically visited David Icke, who interviewed David Icke all day. Not only did she lose all that content she gave up on the project with never an explanation as to where that David Icke footage went. And I too have made that mistake. I'm telling you that the world needs badly female truthers that are not also gonna compromise themselves and say that certain men are good when I don't think they are. And, can, and I've already explained this in a 20 part series why the InfoWars crowd and others are no good, okay? What I wanna see in an incarnation one day is a truth tube with women that instead of doing gang bang porno, they're telling the truth about the new world order without right wing rhetoric and all of this, this is the left, this is the left. So many of the women in the anti-enslavement right genre have been pulled into this right-wing echo chamber. And then you have the women on the left, they're like the left-wing balance, and like you see how they're both controlled. Do you at least see how left-wing men and women are like in these boxes to where they control what's on MSNBC with Ada Rachel Maddow's mouth and CNN, kajunk. And then they control what's on Newsmax. They control what's on Fox News. They control what's on InfoWars, whether you choose to believe that or not. And it's kachonk. And you don't actually have either exposing what's really going down in the global New World Order hood or how what's going on with China and Russia is a bipartisan conspiracy involving either even Rumsfeld in the arming of North Korea. As Joel Skallison said, China will come to North Korea's aid when it goes down. Coming up, coming up, we're going to show you just a fast blast example of an interview between myself and Gypsy Fox, spelled with two X's. I don't like Nazi tube, a.k.a. bit shoot. And if you were in my flesh suit, right, who had my ancestors, you would be horrified by bit shoot too. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and what BitChute represents. Why can't there be like a YouTube BitChute tube that's like for all, that doesn't lead into like a bunch of wacky garbly goo and darkness? 
but Gypsy Fox happens to be a decent content creator. He's Jewish. That's right. He's Jewish. Jewish. And yet he's calling out the new world order. He's calling out Satanism. He's calling out Freemasonry. I don't agree with some of his perspectives, as you could see from the longer interview between myself and him that'll be uploaded to Substack. So get on Substack now. Get on Substack now. I recommend that you take a half hour and you go through the source documentation for the Coast to Coast audience. Read through all those articles on violence and sunspots. Okay? And if you feel compelled to watch my old ass content on the solar flares, if you haven't already, it's there too. Uh, I did a poll. Looks like George Norrie won the poll. Looks like most of you want to have dinner with George Norrie, but one person want to have dinner with me. But where are we going to go have dinner? I like good pizza, good Chinese food, good eclectic food, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of restaurants have really gone downhill but um we got prepper gear to go into like follow your intuition as as that spark ignites within yourself and try to direct yourself away from all this madness and tap into like when your local market has a deal on meat or juice or something or pull over at random to a, to a thrift store, for example, and pick up a couple bag gloves as you're getting ready to go back to the gym as, as I am. So we're going to show you a clip from Giovanni at the end, but we're also going to show you or share with you a short clip of the situation where I'm talking calmly to the man at the lobby several times following the advice of the producer, the big boss at Coast to Coast, who says, dude, go down there and talk to that guy at the desk about him answering the phone. Okay, so he's blaming the phone system while it's happening. And then when I try to talk to him later, he's like, you're a conspiracy tard. Oh, it's a conspiracy. And so sometimes when I look at people and they get into that, I'm going to mock you mode, quite often they will have that, what I will call spirit of mischief kind of aura going on to where it's like you look at them, but it seems like they're not alone in that body. They're mocking you. So where I live, I consider this region along with your region, if you're in like a population zone, to be land of many jinn. I believe that certain places in America is land of many jinn. It's kind of like dances with wolves, you know, or shouts with the fist, you know, I'm like a Native American, I give you name. This is like land of many demon, demon, absolutely. And so if you're in one of these regions and an eclipse is approaching and you're picking up on the shadow people starting to run around again, which I am, it's not that I see things that aren't there. It's that I pick up on the energy darts. And the last time this happened, the last time this happened, the last time this happened, can I get an amen, was the last eclipse. Last eclipse, I'm picking up on that. I'm coming back to the internet doing videos at the park, which you saw, but I'm aware that there's this observation of me and my speech. And then it fades away as we got away from the eclipse. Folks, that's not mental illness. That's the human brain that's being adulterated or changed through the fluctuations in the magnetic field impacting the brain. Natural changes in the magnetic field of the planet impacting the human brain. So we're going to talk about this. But like I said, look, if you want to hang out and do an all day string with me and participate, for those of you that are on the spiritual wavelength and are not disruptors, we will do that. And we'll take a whole bunch of books and just go to pages at random. Uh, what I really need is a flashlight, some kind of in a low white light thing here. But let's go to a page at random. Most forms of of stuttering, such as when applicants stop their speech, stream, or repeat the beginning of a word, do not induce problems in the AI's trans transcriptions and predictions. But she found one problem. When applicants repeat whole strings of words, that long string repetition can hurt your score, she said. She described her test case as extreme cases of stuttering and wondered how humans would also judge them. She would love to work with a disability rights organization to obtain more data to study this area in more depth. Okay. Most of the time when I go to random pages, it's right on. That one was kind of, I need more background to get. It, 
it gets into what's interesting and ironic is the part of the data in the report came from Microsoft's own software tools, a vast ecosystem from Microsoft Teams meetings, emails, and Outlook, Word. Yeah. In 2020, Zoom introduced attention tracking during video calls, which shows managers if participants were opening other tabs or were solely looking at the Zoom meeting. After a public backlash, Zoom deactivated the feature. Right, so when I was talking to Gypsy also, one of the things that happened was it transcribed in like a new feature, AI feature. Basically, it, it provided a 90% a accurate summary. The fact that it got the 10% wrong was alarming because AI should be smart enough to have gotten it right. Okay, maybe we'll go into the content later once I, once I upload the discussion with Giovanni and we compare how AI interpreted that conversation. Again, an AI spied on my conversation with him, okay, without asking that I can recall, okay? Didn't ask, didn't say, do you mind if I listen? And then just do a little write-up and, you know, maybe uh, misunderstand a little bit of what you say, which, which is alarming, right? And so my opinion on the whole thing is that the true state of technology is way more advanced, right? What a surprise. Then what is the consumer grade stuff, okay? So again, last night I wasn't able to fully ascertain whether it was government interference and the man was angry that I wanted the answers. And I was telling him, I asked him if he knew what space weather was. And he got really perturbed at that going, of course, as if everybody knows what space weather is. I get so tired of the arrogant answers. It, it just it was, a, it was a question. Because I was like, okay, if there's space weather, which there was, maybe that is why the phones weren't working. Maybe it's not user error. So me just basically speaking and asserting, my, so basically at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, something like that, I'm leaving their place, their hotel. And he's being rude with me about it and he's not properly checking me out. And I don't know if I told you this, when I went in the room, there was no chair and there was no blanket. And then the young millennial blonde girl, whatever her hair was, was dyed blonde or silver. It was dyed silver. I guess that's another millennial, young, female, 20, 19 year old thing. But she had this whole zombie don't talk to me thing going on when I walked in there and checked in. It was like, what are you doing here? Like there is... Uh, look, you don't get it. There is like a whole aura of don't talk to me, don't be conscious, don't be loving, don't anything, bro, don't anything here locally and for miles. I can see for miles and miles. I can see for miles and miles. I can see. Seriously, it is a zombie apocalypse. It is a cannibal zone. And I'm telling you, no, Lord, just take me home if it's going to come down to you like eating flesh. Now, let me tell you this. This whole thing that Twitter is doing with the cannibals are coming, the cannibals are coming. According to official news, yes, there's civil war in Haiti. Yes, there's getting violence. Yes, the U.S. might intervene. But the official news is it's not a zombie apocalypse. They're not eating flesh. Why then would Elon Musk answer the question? I asked you to answer the question, Sherlock. I think you know everything. Answer the question. Why then would Elon Musk right, have such a hardcore agenda to push this? They're cannibals. They're cannibals. They're cannibals. And then what about that white guy that was beating up that black guy? Are you really sure that no black man is going to be upset seeing this black man being beat up by this white guy? Oh, oh, in the era of supposed pushback against white supremacy, the woke version, you're going to tell me no black man is going to be upset when that white man is beating up that black guy? Like, wake up, McFly. Wake up. I do not tolerate unadulterated ignorance in my classroom. You will respect the teachings or you will hit the back button and dislike. Now, let's talk about prepping. Okay. Freeze dried diced chicken. Okay, just ideas. Okay. Candles. Um, I've had this for 10 years, haven't used it. This is for grain. And there's a company that I may buy from that's not a commercial that I may buy from that's based in Oregon. And I'm going to look at that company. I've mentioned it before. They're near the, or the, the uh, Mount Hood, in fact. Right? Have you seen Weird Science? How would you like a nice, greasy pork sandwich served in a dirty ashtray? Uh, 
not quite that, but we have Keystone chicken and I also have some beef. So I invested when I had some money, 50 bucks, 100 bucks in, in just some beef, beef, okay? So when the zombies come in, you can take those cans of beef and go whoomp. You know, it'll literally be like, you know, you need instructions, folks, on how to deal with the zombie apocalypse response team blueprint for when the thriller music video goes live, okay? A lot of these people run around saying they're part of the zombie apocalypse response team. They are the zombies. Uh, hearty vegetable beef flavored soup mix. Might not sound delicious, but it's got some weight to it. One of the things that I noticed is that propane has really gone up recently. It's just, it's just gone up. Like the little cylinders, like wow. Um, so, stored food recommendation. If you like quinoa, get quinoa. It's got magnesium. It's good for the brain. It's got a lot of amino acids. It's a good carb. Try to get away from the bad carbs. I'm somewhere where one positive thing, there's not very many, I can sometimes find the natural juice without refined sugar from the Naked brand, 12 ounces for sometimes like a dollar instead of three or four dollars. So right now I'm actually jacked up, folks, on coffee and refined sugar. Have not smoked cigarettes in four years drank once or twice over the course of the last four years, have not done Molly or quote MDMA in 11 years and much, much longer for acid or mushrooms. I'm actually a pretty healthy person that at this point in time, I've got this energy field around me that is powerful, okay? And so when you assert yourself, when you're powerful, even if you're speaking calmly, there will be an energy to you and a frequency that will upset the entities courted to the humans, that your light and energy and frequency is looking straight into. And so like literally I was energetically looking straight into their frequency at the dental school one month ago when I said my heart rate is up because of traffic, coffee, and a magnetic storm. They're like, those things don't cause it. We're kicking you out of the school. They called security without saying, dude, leave now or we call security. They called security preemptively. And then I called management and they fixed it, put me back in the school, but they did not apologize. Then here I am trying to do a coast to coast interview. I try to assert myself and say, sir, I paid 70 to $80. Next part of the story. So it's the morning I leave. And then I come back waiting for like a new staff member. And the guy is there. Plus what appears to be an Indian or Paki Pakistani, maybe manager. Okay. And he's acting like he's the nice guy. And the other guy's snapping at me when I'm explaining the situation. And I'm explaining to the, the, the refugee, manager, immigrant, whatever guy, this guy's being rude. I'm trying to talk to you. And then he immediately cuts me off and says, call the cops. He immediately cuts me off and says, call the cops to the staff member there because I'm talking. And I'm not saying give me my money back or else or just give me my money. I'm saying I'm advocating for I'm using this language and I recorded myself. And I'm speaking in a tone that I'm like in the same tone now with the exception of the fact that I'm not in your room. That's the difference. When I'm in the room and I'm speaking like I am now, there's a feeling that goes with the speech. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so it's that sensation that goes with the speech or my existence that can result in people like me being fired from Ruth Gore Steakhouse in Portland, Oregon, when my vibes of higher consciousness alienate the people of the lower, nothing wrong per se in my current understanding of eating meat, although I do respect the spirit of vegetarianism and certainly would advocate for it in some circumstances from a non-WEF, non-New World Order, non crappy plant food perspective because to be super reliant on me is also to be reliant on the system and a certain amount of money. And we want to be able to operate without that system where possible for as long as possible, but it has its place. The point is, is those were drinkers. Those were people that waste a lot of money on steak. That wasn't even the best meat to get more specific to it. They were not in a higher consciousness, um, as I got deeper into my studies and erupted with my solar knowledge, wow, I'm hitting a, every time I put out, there's a pattern with sharing information and tribulation. I've been specific in the past. Some of you don't know. Some of you are new here. 
And there's an autobiography, b- Cliff Notes, that you can read in three to four hours. And there's plenty of things my dad did to me that I didn't put in there because I was like, just get the most important stuff done. Like attacking me physically and me demonstrating to my father that I was physically stronger with him, so strong, in fact, that I could take his hand as he tries to grab me around and, no, you don't. There you go, you B-word. There you go, B-word. Yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead and call the cops. You just rich, you just ripped my shirt. And that's what I did to my dad. You want to grab me? Here, rip my shirt. Yeah, you. that's assault. I demonstrated to him he was not alpha in that situation. Okay, he was not going to own me in that situation. I'm telling you, you got to own these demons of this realm. <laughs> Voice in the head, whatever it is, you need to know what it is that's holding you back. You know damn well what I mean. When I'm making content, when I'm not doing content, you know that whatever issues you're dealing with has nothing to do with me. And that I am a beacon of light that shares unique perspectives that I know you know you're not going to get from InfoWars.com. Info Will Clyde Lewis return my third, fourth invitation to have a mutual discussion with him about the solar cycles. It seems that while Clyde has a mystical, spiritual side to him that comes across on the, on the radio like a friendly good guy, the real Clyde Lewis will reply to me when he sees me refer to him in my auto bio or a tweet as a former friend. He'll go, former friend? Okay. Bro, dude, grow up. You personally benefited from a survival store that I helped open. A survival store that I helped build, that I lived in, that I named. I named the Portland Preparedness Center. I was the guy with a viewer who was a graphic designer who volunteered to make the Portland Preparedness logo and poster because he was a viewer of OTB TV. Do you think that he continued to be a viewer of OTB TV after he did graphics for that store? An energy came in, and and I'm sure at him, that made sure he was gone like that. I even went to one of his nerdy-ass Dungeons & Dragons get-together with geeks in Milwaukee, Oregon. You think any of these geeks in Milwaukee, Oregon respected the great Alex I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that sounds narcissistic, but I loved hearing that yesterday in the comments. Like, I don't want to see Nori. I want to hang out. He's like, you got it, bro. A great Alex answer. Don't you forget it. Get that tattooed and get, we'll get the mug soon. So I'm just trying to give you some perspective. I'm not this, that. It's not playing victim. It's not playing narcissist. I'm a guy that has value, period, and way more value than what people perceive. Not narcissistic, accurate. I can push back way more philosophically against the anti-white rhetoric than some of the people that you have come to love and trust for a long time. You think Red Ice Creations has what it takes to really pull off the defense that's needed to stop the slaughter that I sense is coming to young aspects of white America that are coming out. I see the videos of young white women being beat up on Twitter, and I know the truth as to why the owner of Twitter is doing nothing to stop it. So you are either with me or you're against me. There's a part of me that sees some people that claim to be part of the anti-anti-white crowd. Sometimes I see them as part of the anti-white crowd by their refusal to acknowledge the real hate that does exist in this world that makes white people look bad. You can even say the same thing about Muslims that don't call out terrorists and extremists or Jewish extremists or Latinos and Hispanics that don't call out those that are connected to the cartel as say look the other way, I say, when their little kids and brothers are doing heroin, just like that movie that's probably still free on YouTube. It's decent. Blood in, blood out. Safety light stick also. So we are now at the 48-minute mark, okay? It is time to wrap things up with our conclusionary statements. Again, if you want round-the-clock coverage and content, Portland, Oregon, if you are watching, try to do something in your life to let me know you actually have a pulse. Right now, there's really none of you. And it leads me to think that there's something way deeper, fundamentally wrong with Portland than what I'm currently aware of. If any of you just wants to clue me in, and what's really going on with Portland and the silence that's occurring. Because I think that's bizarre. I think that's bizarre to go on the largest 
talk show in North America and be one of the only true contrarians in Portland, Oregon, outside of Clyde Lewis. I don't agree with everything, but he has some important things to say. So if my message, and I'm literally like from the oven in Portland, Oregon, came out of the oven in Portland, Oregon, that people in Portland, Oregon can't get me, that people on coast to coast can't get me, if my mom can't get me and congratulate me in my moment of truth, and my father can't see a single thing in my solar flare blocks when he has an interest in the sun and is freaked out about earthquakes and the changes in the Earth's core. Now that, my friends... It's a psychopathic, sociopathic matrix reality that I inherited. And you are invited to be a part of my healing for the remainder of my time here on earth. You can choose to be a part of that healing or you can choose to become a spectator. But I do appreciate those of you that I would consider to be my students. But I have very little interest in blind entertainment without truth. There always has to be some education and truth and knowledge in the entertainment, okay? Because I did not sign up to be a stripper, to be a fake news content creator, to be a superstar, to be the Bruce Lee of the conspiracy theory movement. There was one point in my life where I thought that I was going to go for that title. And then I realized, no. It's not about number one. It's not about who's the strongest. It's not a matter of who's the most popular. It's a matter of whether your heart has become light enough to evolve beyond this type of a reality. So on that level, it's not about competition and earning the praise and donations and likes from the humanoid reality and the women. Oh, oh, the women. No, 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 no. I serve to impress God. And when God is impressed by me, then awesome men and women will find me. And they will begin to help me. And with that, a fusion and a force will begin. And many people on the planet will have their enlightenment moment. Because knowledge is healing. And we have right now a virus and an epidemic of the idiocracy psychological construct. With many people, unfortunately, right now being locked into the social ape android hierarchy. In which... They are acting like monkeys, yet influenced by robotics over who has the value and over who is seen as worthless and the threat, right? So email folks, solarstorm333 at proton.me. Maybe next week I'll work on getting some sort of a temporary number for people to leave voicemails. I did this before several years ago. The audience did not use the option and a few people wanted to abuse it. So I'm not sure yet if consciousness has risen yet for me to launch a Facebook group or another group and actually have participation. From what we've seen so far in the Substack comment section and beyond, there really is little participation at all. Um, if you did feel illuminated by the Coast to Coast interview and from your side of the street, it wasn't a bust and that something I said illuminated something in your consciousness in the way that Burl Payne illuminated something in my consciousness. I'd love to hear that. Till next week, folks, I'm Alex Hansery reminding you the path to the ultimate truth and place of power and peace still lies within. We'll see you next week. The website, sign up for the email, get everything in your inbox, alexhansery.substack.com. Okay, we are in the hotel lobby. Sir, I asked you if you're able to answer the phone call. They, 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 they said you weren't able to transfer it, so I'm on the phone now. Hello. Yeah. Do you have a number that they can call? Because they don't want me on the cell phone. Can you write down a phone number for a landline? Yeah, for a landline for them to call. I have a book about it. I'm an author. That's what okay. my talk show was about. It was about the sun, dude. Okay. I know about disturbances to the grid caused by okay. the sun. I'm asking uh, if you if it was a normal thing that happened or if it was a glitch that happened. Correct. And so now, like I'm the kind of person I don't want to work so much, even if it has extra money, because 
I use my downtime when the truck is stopped to work out. I eat a clean diet and I like to study, whether it's watching a video or reading a book. So I just need a little, a nice balance. And I don't want a whole bunch of money, but I want to get paid for the work I do. And so they actually have lowered the wages and they have you working not really more hours. It's just they're giving you more to do in a shorter amount of time. And the bad thing is if you live in California or wherever and you're out on the road, like in New York or Virginia, you know, you're far away from home. And when you start seeing little subtle games and tricks, they're playing on you to get more work and more deliveries out of you. You get upset, but there's not a lot you can do about it because you're so far away from home. They have you trapped. Now, most people can't do anything about it because they don't have the experience to pack up and go somewhere else. Once you've driven for like two or three years, you can get a job anywhere like that. So I was working for a company and they started playing little games with me. And um, I was so far away from home that I had to allow them to abuse me, not physically abuse me, but abuse me by you know taking advantage of me. And um, it, it, it takes a lot out of you because you literally feel, I mean, in a way, you're tied up and getting kicked in the face, metaphorically, because you're stuck in a truck and you can't just leave it on the side of the road. And so anyway, so I made it back and now I'm back in my van and uh, I live in my van by choice because I save money and I prefer to not be around a lot of people and I like to move around to different locations. So right now I'm driving back to the city I live in. I'm in Northern California and uh, I'm driving my van back there and uh, talking to Mr. An Answer. So. Still reaching for the lights 